Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, is indeed Lord. He's over it all, He's above it all, and in Him we live, we move, we have our being. And in Him, the author and the finisher of our faith, we um, <laughs> we walk this thing out amidst the craziness of what we call and consider life on this earth and what we consider uh, our time in this space, in this paradigm, <clears throat> which, uh, you know, is, is continually shifting, is continually changing. We get up one day and things are very different than they were just not too long ago. So keeping our, our mind, keeping our focus, keeping our thoughts is, and keeping our, our, uh, our, our ability to track, to continue to focus on the things that need to be focused on. So seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You know, off the overflow of that to love your neighbor as yourself because you can't love your neighbor as yourself if you don't have the love of God flowing through you in the first place. So you, you need to keep the things, the first things first, the second thing second, the priorities in the right way in the right line. Um, <clears throat> okay, amidst all of that, you know, we, we've been, there's been plenty of people out there, uh, a lot of the people that I know and love and care for, that have taken some some tough hits in these days, and uh, you know myself included, for different things, varying ways, and that too, um, you know, keeping the perspective that this life and its current form and its current situation, its current setup, this is not it for any of us. We're we're transitioning through. And we're here for a window and a season and a time, and then once that's done, it's done. Once that's finished, then we carry on to the next paradigm that God would have us to be in. But while we're here, you've got to keep in mind the things that are actually important for your time here. You've got to keep in mind the things that are worthwhile focusing on while you're here. Because if you miss those pieces then you, you will have frittered away the window that you were here for. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to get, if he, if he can't take you to hell with him, then he wants you to squander the window that you have here. Because he knows, just even off the words of Christ, everything that you do apart from God counts for nothing. Um, apart from him, you can do nothing. So he wants to get you apart from him. He wants you to willfully remove yourself from the hand of God and to go outside of that and to get caught up in all these dead works. He wants you to pursue or to be distracted with the worries, the riches, and the pleasures of this world, which will make you unfruitful. So he does these kind of things because these are his strategies towards us. In order to, if he can't, if he can't neutralize you, if he can't kill you, if he can't neutralize you, or, you know, he just wants to make you ineffective, and that's another form of neutralization. But to keep you from ever realizing your purpose and your reason for being and the reason that God would have you on the earth at such a time as this. Because you came into the earth for a reason and for a purpose. You came into the earth at such a time as this because God's design and plan for you. So it is no wonder that that the beehive gets all activated every time um, <clears throat> you do anything in line with what God wants you to do. You know, it's amazing that, like, I mean, I just actually had to restart this again just because the second that I hit record, um, everything around went crazy. <laughs> Why? You know, I mean, dogs started barking, noises started coming from everywhere. Everything was fine until I hit the record button. Until what? Because what happened in the realm of the spirit? And the second that in the realm of the spirit, this goes up, then all things in the realm of the spirit get active and demonic presences start flying all over the place and, and dogs that are spiritual see and sense those things too. And so they start barking. Um, you know, things start moving. Things start getting active. Things start getting stirred up. And that's part of it, you know. And then, and so when you now in your own life 
start doing things in line with the Spirit of God, well, of course, any person that's on the side of the enemy, that is an empty vessel for the enemy, is going to be overtaken. And if they can cause hurt, if they can cause harm, if they can cause pain, if they can cause distraction, if they can do something to, to they will, because they're under orders to do so. So the human agents of the devil will follow the instructions of the devil to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and to try to hurt, and to try to harm you. So there is, there is a reason that the scriptures say that my, pe- my people perish for lack of knowledge. They, they, because we don't know and we don't understand and people haven't taught us those kind of things. They haven't taught us how to be wise as serpents, as innocent as doves. They haven't taught us how to make good decisions and good choices and they haven't taught us how to, as much as possible, um, you know, live at peace with both before God and man. And they haven't taught us how to um, shore up the things that we need to shore up. Because of that, we, get, we take hits, and sometimes we take hits that could be avoided. Some things can't be avoided, some things can. So, <clears throat> you know, this is where, you know, you will get wisdom with as you go through and you're battle tested and you're battle hardened you're going to get wisdom and understanding in what you should do and how you should do certain things so god is going to give you that because you are are you're going through experiences with him this is also where you learn to listen to the voice of the spirit and when the spirit gives you something to do you do it when god quickens you for something you you follow that instruction because if you ignore the instructions of god you it can cost you your life and if you are if you check out of here um <clears throat> the moment that you check out of here to live as christ to die is gain the moment you check out you're not here anymore but you can't affect what's going on in this paradigm anymore and god sent you here for a reason jesus when he checked out he had finished everything that he had come here to do it was finished that's why he said it it is finished you want to be able to say it is finished when you've, when you've finished up your window and your time here. You don't want to leave things half done when God has given you a season and a reason and a purpose to be here. So, now, um, now we understand, the scriptures tell us that we are not ignorant of the devil's schemes, right? Um, you know, we are not, and the word scheme is the same word, uh, where root word where we get the word methods, methodios, methods. So <clears throat> we're not ignorant of the devil's schemes. It's in Ecclesiastes. So, uh, or, wait, no, yeah, Ecclesiastes. Um, so in, in Paul's writings to the church. Now, with the schemes of the devil, we've gotten more and more and more familiar and and as we've kind of published and talked about those sort of things so we drag them out into the light so that you know what they are when they happen so that when they happen and when they come up you understand that it's part of the course it's parcel of the journey and it's it's something that you also have the power to be able to deal with so this is why it's important for example that you pray and that you pray your days. This is an example of why it's important to read, because when you read the scriptures, God gives you instructions that are in there and gives you wisdom for the day. This is, this is why it's important to listen to the voice and the leading of the Holy Spirit. When you listen to the voice and the leading of the Holy Spirit, sometimes you won't be in the crossfire, crossfire or in the crosshairs of the devil, because you won't be there, because God will have you have gone somewhere else. And just like Jesus, you'll have walked from among them, and they won't even know where you are. So there's going to be reason for you to do certain things there's going to be um and there's there's things that you can do that will strengthen your spirit you've got to be real with god you can't leave things undone you can't you 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 can't try to go at this this journey in the way that the world does it because you're up against a foe that has far more resource and strength than you ever will in the natural So you've got to go to the realm of the Spirit because that is where your authority is and that is where your power is. Jesus said, All authority on heaven and on earth was given unto me, therefore go. 
Make disciples of all nations. Therefore, go, cast out the demons. Therefore, go, heal the sick. Therefore, go, raise the dead. Therefore, go and do whatever it is that I give you to do as an extension of me because you're grafted into the vine, John 15. You're grafted into the vine, so now go in confidence. Go in truth. Now, as you go and you know the understanding of the fact that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church... Outside of the movie Spartacus, I've never seen an example where gates have been used as as an offensive weapon. Gates are for defense. Gates are to keep people out. Gates are to secure a position. Gates are to secure and to hold things in. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. You are the church. So the gates of hell will not prevail against you. So this is why the enemy wants to try to get you neutralized, you bogged down, you broken in two, you so paralyzed that you can't get up and move against the gates. Because if you move against the gates, then the gates will fall apart. So move against the gates. Move against the gates. Move and push and watch them just disintegrate as you move forward. Watch as you as you call their bluff because they've got no power. Once they... Okay, here's the thing. They have power in the sense of man and a man-made power that's derived from their particular system. But when it comes up against the power of the living God, the greater authority and the greater power is with us. So if you go apart from God, you're going to get rolled. If you're in Christ Jesus and you're riding the wave and your eyes are on Christ, you're going to roll them. So you need to be spiritually, positionally correct, right? So spiritually and positionally correct. And this is why we spend time in prayer. This is why we spend time in repentance before God when you need to. This is where we, we allow for the Spirit to search our hearts and to root out in us any unclean thing and anything that is, because we, it's not worth it. Whatever, whatever thrill you might get from whatever it is that the world might offer, it is not worth it. It is not worth the spiritual damage that you take. It's not worth the natural damage to your body. It's not worth the the access the enemy gets into your life. None of it. Anything that is that is whatever God tells you to just drop and let go, just drop it and let it go. It's not worth it and God will give you the power to be able to do that and you can move on. Because you want to move on in the full Uh, the fullness of who Christ Jesus wants you to be in such a time as this. Now, knowing that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, will not prevail against you, child of the living God, as you move forward. Okay, let's talk about something. Now, we know how the devil, we know some of the devil's methods against us, right? Okay, so we know some things that, that, now let's talk about some things of how we destroy and tear down the devil. And his kingdom. Because Jesus said in John, 1 John 3, uh, For this reason the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Right? Right. So, for this reason, th- this, is, this was the reason that Jesus Christ was manifest on the earth. The rock that was cut without human hands that came down and smashed the idol in the vision, of, in the vision that Nebuchadnezzar had, that Daniel saw, um, <clears throat> grew and filled the whole earth. This is the reason that it came, was to destroy the whole thing. So now, as we move forward, going to start making a few things known. Um, as, as we move forward, okay, how and what will be markers of that? Okay, uh, Mark chapter 3. Verse 23 says, And he called unto them, called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Okay. 
I'm going to put those two on the table for a start. If Satan be divided against himself and be divided, he cannot stand it, but hath an end. <clears throat> you know, when we started this push by the, the, the quickening of the Spirit of God um, with, with key people that are out there and, and a lot of people that are working on all of this, but around, say, for example, the end of human trafficking, the end of modern-day slavery, Satan got very united, very, very, very united around trying to stop that move because human trafficking, modern-day slavery, the destruction of the souls of the most vulnerable in our society and the most vulnerable among us, and the, the, that is the taproot of the world and the world system. That is where they garner their spiritual power. That's why there's so much money there. That's why there's so much corruption that's around it. That's why they do so much to make it disappear whenever it comes out onto the onto the stage. That's why they the, that that you'll get a situation like the WikiLeaks and Mueller who will say that these emails were hacked from John Podesta and they'll put it into an indictment, but at the same time they won't talk about the contents of the email which show that John Podesta is a pedophile. Keeping and and people writing back and forth about in FBI D, in FBI declassified code language of pedophiles and talking about them keeping kids in hot tubs for their entertainment in the evenings and this stuff is in pools for for their entertainment of these adults. All this stuff is there. You can go look at it today. But why will they not bring that out? Because because that is their system. That's the very thing that needs to be there in, and, and they have to participate in in order to get access in the first place. See, one of the mistakes that we've made as, as children of the living God is seeing things through our filter, is seeing things through our mind, seeing things through our mindset, which is one of logic, one of reason, one of truth, one of decency, one of morality. That's not what these people are. They're not even people. They, as scriptures would talk about them being something else. Because the wheat and the tares grow together. They're tares. In God's eyes, they're tares. And as we approach a wrapping up of things, as we approach a lot of things that God is doing, they're also going to be divided. They're also going to be revealed. Now, What the enemy has done <clears throat> among the children of God has been to try to create division among us throughout, historically. That has been a, a, a very powerful and effective weapon of the enemy. Every time you see the children of God begin to mobilize, begin to get together, begin to get on track, why do you see the infiltration whenever... So Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Well, where two or three are gathered in Jesus' name, the devil wants to know about it because he wants to send one of his in there too so that he can break it up so that it's not going to be in Jesus' name that people gather together, that it's going to be as soon as then they're going to come in and they're going to try to break that up because they want to neutralize the power because they know that the authority is in that place where people are gathered in Jesus' name. If, to, if you touch and agree with anybody in Jesus' name on this earth and you pray and you pray in line with the will of God, it shall be done, right? So what do they want to do? They want to bring in an infiltrator right away into that situation, into that circle, so there is no agreement. So there is no agreement so that nothing can move forward. The enemy has been doing this throughout <clears throat> and for some reason because also the the larger push to be vetted and to be approved of by the world has sunken into the mind and the mentality of so many people that they now they don't want to lose any of their flock right seeker friendly right which is completely against the way that Jesus was Jesus would give a hard teaching in John 6 and everybody would leave 
And he turned to the disciples saying, well, are you guys going to take off too? They said, where else are we going to go? Lord, you have the words of eternal life. Would to God that we would teach the truth and see who's left after we've done it. The day of Pentecost, 500 were invited, 120 showed up. This is the resurrection. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And you've got three you've got 380 people that didn't show. But where brothers Sisters dwell together in unity. That's where the presence of God is going to be. Now, the enemy knows that if he can bring division in and among your ranks, then he's going to neutralize your ability to move forward. Now, listen, this is not rocket science. This is stuff that even even in the corporate world people understand. Why is it that they have a vision and a mission and a goal that they they tell to their people when they've you've got because here it is, this is who we are, this is what we do, this is where we're going. Right? And then when they do that, what do, what what happens in corporations and all the people know, okay, this is the direction we're going, this is what we're about, this is what we're committing ourselves to. And even there's some if nothing else, there's some level of, okay, this is what we're doing here when we get together from 9 to 5 or 24-7, however these guys work these days. So for us, we understand that the enemy wants to break that up. The enemy wants to break that up. You know, One of the reasons that 20 on 20 has been so powerful by God's design has been because it's, it's very focused, very specific, very deliberate, and there's a very clear reason, and it's in line with God's timing. And the people that come together come together around that. And that's it. One reason, one purpose. Take it before God to ask Him to accomplish that which is already in His Word and plan and purpose for His church and for the people of God on the earth at such a time as this. Done. Let's pray every month and let's keep doing it. But the enemy knows the power of that. And so, (laughs) I mean, all hell is broken loose. All over the place. Do we stop? No. No, 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 no. No, if, if, if we, whenever we take a hit, if we have breath in us, we still keep going. That's part of the challenge. It's part of the, the test. We, we just, we bring it before God. Lord, if you give me strength, I'll keep going. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Lord God, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thine will be done. I think we were getting a much more, a better perspective now of what Jesus went through in that time just by the life experiences that all of us are going through as we track with God. It's not boring. It is not boring. Your time on this earth will not have been boring. That is for sure. Okay. If Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand. But how an end? Well, here's the question. <clears throat> Why is it that we allow the enemy to be united and we allow the enemy to bring division among us? How about this for a change? Why not bring division through some... Bring division to the enemy. Bring division to the enemy. Use some wisdom and some knowledge and some understanding to bring and divide and break up the enemy and the camps of the enemy. How about that for a change? Here's one that you can use against the enemy. Okay, you want a scriptural example? Well, Paul, when he was brought up before the the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he recognized the divisions that they had internally among themselves. So he talked about the resurrection of the dead. 
And he said, because of my hope in the resurrection of the dead, that's the reason that I'm on trial today. And what happened? Well, this was their rift between them. And he knew their weak spot. And he got them all fighting against each other. Between the camps that that believed in the resurrection of the dead and the ones that didn't. One well-placed psychological time bomb in that situation, in that context, and they all were at each other's throats. Why not start to divide the enemy up? Because you know what? Part of what the, what's going to happen as God <clears throat> destroys their kingdom, pulverizes it into nothing, is that they will bite and devour one another. We want to we want to have unity among the brethren, but among the enemy. Listen, and here's the here's the way you do that: toss the truth in there, toss the inconvenient truth in there, and let them have to deal with it. But realize too, you're not working with you're not dealing with logical people. But split them up. Split up the enemies. Because the enemy is working to try to go after you. The enemy is working to try to go after anything where... And this is where also we have to... We have to be smart about how we set things up, always. Don't let the enemy have that access. Because wherever the enemy has access, that's where he's going to try to get in. This is why you've got so much corruption inside religious systems in the world. It's because the enemy, as soon as they get an address and a place, and now they come in as volunteers. They're there front and center. They're there to help you with the things you need help with. And once they get in and they start working their way in, then just like the book of Jude, they've, they've, they've come in as unawares. They've come in. Just like Acts 24, Paul said, as soon as I'm out of the way, these guys are going to come in as savage wolves. Book of Jude has already happened. Church has been overrun. They've got the degree on the wall. They wear the collar. They wear the shirt. But, you know, now now they've risen to the top to secure control. To keep you from getting out. To keep you from following God. To keep you from knowing the truth. To keep you from walking in the prophetic gifts that God has put inside of you. To keep you from being what God made you to be. Because if you do that, they don't have control. They don't have power. They can't use you as a resource. This is important stuff for them. They don't want you getting out. They do not want you exiting the world and the world system. Because then you're a lost resource. And if it's the case that you exit the world and the world system, then they can't have you having anybody else go with you. So now it's, it's, it's damage control for them. And damage control for them is to cut you off at the knees, to silence your voice, to censor you. Oh, this is going to become a big one. It's already becoming a big one. I mean, we've all experienced it in shadow banning and the rest of it, but it's going mainstream now. It's going much, much larger. Because they've got to keep people. <clears throat> okay, so one, um, dealing with the enemy, realizing that if Satan be divided against itself and his kingdom be divided against itself, that his kingdom cannot stand. So let's use the truth to divide the enemy. Let's use the truth to divide the enemy. Let's use the truth to divide the enemy. Consider the different things you're working on and the application of that in that area. Okay, here's another one. Verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man. 
and then he will spoil his house. Okay, so here's the thing. You have to be coming from a position of strength in order to deal with the strong man. Now, we are going into the situation where we're plundering the enemy. So you need to be in a position of strength and coming from a position of strength if you are going to do these things. So this does not... So, well, where does the strength come from? Well, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So you got to be in the spirit. you got to be in Christ Jesus. You And there's natural things that you can do that will also give you strength. Strength for the journey and strength for the fight so that you can be in a good position. But if you're going to bind the strong man, you need to be doing it from, uh, you got to be coming from a spot of strength. And God will give you that, and you can move in the authority that you have in Him, and there's things that you can do in your day-to-day that will increase your strength. Here's another one. One will put a 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. So again, coming into a place of agreement with your brothers and sisters in Christ and protecting that. You know, I think that's part of the reason why God struck dead Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts when they tried when they were trying to infiltrate the early church because there was such a critical stage with all that was going on and the, the they were still learning. They were still learning a lot of things. They were still learning how to deal with um, the infiltrators. They were still learning how to deal with, uh, you know, the just keeping things on right track. And so God just exposed them before Peter. First Ananias drops dead. The wife comes in a couple hours later. She drops dead too. Because God sees and God knows. Nothing's hid before him. But you want to be, when you've got some brothers and sisters in Christ that you can pray with and pray for, and there's no lording over each other, okay? That's something that the world does. You know, with, with, the, with the people that I know <laughs> that walk in the Spirit, there is no lording over one or the other. Everybody follows Christ. He is the head. And when we get together, we fall into this beautiful place of spiritual unity. We're just like in your own body. Your different organs know what they need to do and they're all receiving the message from the head. And just like that, when we come together as a body of Christ, everybody receives the message from the head. There's no friction. Even if you have a disagreement about something, it's a good thing. And it makes for something better. But there's no, there's just, it's just beautiful. And when we pray, there's power. One will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand to flight. You want to. You want to move in that kind of power. You want to move in that kind of strength. So to bind the strong man, you've got to be coming from a position of strength. So now here's the thing. In the scriptures, plenty of things have been given to you for how to walk in strength. All right, let's talk about some things that will kill your strength. Well, there's plenty of things in the world that that will kill the strength that's in you. The enemy wants to destroy your spiritual strength. So he wants to keep you from praying. He wants to keep you from reading the Word. Okay, <clears throat> he wants to, to wrap you up, for example, get you to watch porn. How's that one for you? Why? Because now it saps your spiritual strength. If he can sap your spiritual strength, sap you in the mind, put all this kind of stuff up there into your brain, now what? To fritter away your window, your time here. There's a reason that in the book of Job that Job said that he had made a, a covenant with his own eyes. He made a promise with his own eyes. You know, he'd done something even inside of himself. You know what you'll find? Uh, here's something that, that I found <clears throat> in looking at a lot of these guys that had wisdom that was given by God in a lot of the situations and not all of them because Solomon you know he, he didn't have he didn't seem to have much restraint in that area but a lot of them they 
made decisions to, in some way, shape, or form, set themselves aside unto God to keep their spiritual focus and their heart there. Whether it was Joseph in a bad situation, keeping his focus and his heart in the right place, whether it was Daniel, you know, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just saying, look, you know, we're slaves, but if we can, if we can avoid it, we want to avoid this defiled food, and God gave him a way out. But it was it was because there was an act of worship unto God. It was an act of consecration unto God, despite the fact that they were slaves. You know, whether it's Job, but they made a decision in themselves. And you can make a decision no matter what your surroundings are. You can make a decision no matter what your situation is to still keep your heart and mind consecrated under the living God. Somehow, some way, in some, just ask Him. Because God, man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. And if you within yourself, in your own heart, say, you know what, Lord, this is what I want. This is the way that I want to do it. I want to be able to follow you with my whole heart. I want to be able to give everything over to you. I'm looking to you, the author and the finisher of my faith. I need to know from you. I've got to hear from you. Lord, please show me. Please teach me. Please quicken me so that I can make the right decision in line with your plan and purpose because that's the way I want to go. So if you're going to spoil the devil, destroy the works of the devil as the Spirit of God leads and guides you, well, use truth to divide your enemy. Use truth to, to bring division into the camps of the enemy. Now, use the um, move in strength to bind the enemy. you got to know what you have access to inside of the, the Scriptures and the Word. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they're spiritual. They're powerful in Christ Jesus. So know what you have access to inside of the Word. So that's, that's given to you. <clears throat> so use it. That's given to you. So move in it. See, when, when, when you know what you have access to, then you can move in the power of that. So you got to spend some time reading. you got to spend some time studying. They, there's a lot of stuff on Faith Mix. You go through the archives. Use whatever you can. Um, we're going to continue getting more organized there. Faithmix.com. Use it. You know, there's, there's stuff that's there for you. There's stuff that's there to help you. There's stuff that's there to bless you. But, but and there's a lot of, of resources that are out there for you. Use those things so that you can come from a position of strength and not from a position of weakness when you're dealing with the enemy. Because we plunder the enemy. We go in and we take captive every thought. We take, we take captive every resource of the enemy as we move forward being led by the Spirit because we have the greater authority. And we're dealing with usurpers. We're dealing with parasites. You know, one thing too, one fascinating thing when I was doing some reading in the book of Enoch recently, it's the weeds that are taken away in the time of the conflagration. It is the weeds that are taken away. Think about it during the days of Noah. It was the wicked that were taken away. Noah was the one that was spared. Noah and his family the ones that spared and left behind. So it's the weeds that are taken away. How about that for a change in perspective? How about that for a change in the way that things are done? How about, would that change the way that we would approach our time here on the earth? Now here's one more thing to keep in mind. <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> and this, this, uh, this piece about Satan being divided against himself and binding the strong man, uh, it's, it's in more places in the scriptures. But you know, another place contextually that's also another thing that's talked about too um, in another place is the fact that Satan is a liar, and he's the father of all lies. And when he when he lies, he speaks his he speaks his own language. He's well, actually, yeah. These are just some things that Jesus has talked about um, with regards to Satan. When he's when he lies, because I've got a really cool book that's just just words of Jesus. Love reading that one. But when this when Satan lies, he speaks his own language. He speaks his language. And and he's the father of all lies. So now Satan himself cannot exist in an environment 
of truth. Satan cannot exist in an environment where where um, where there's where there's truth. Here, let me read you this. If it is the devil that catches the word out of the hearts of men when they don't understand it, at least they should believe and be saved. Satan savors not the things that be of God. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks his language, for he is a liar and the father of it. He is a thief coming only to steal, kill, and destroy. But now is the judgment of this world, and now shall the prince of this world be cast out, because the prince of this world is judged." So Satan and his destruction is going to be in part because the environment that's created will also be an environment of truth where things are what they are and the lie has no place and the lie can't exist. And as the lie has no place and the lie has no, it can't exist, he loses his power. So, so let's begin with us. And the way that that begins with us is you and I be people of truth. You and I be people of truth. And when we're people of truth, the devil has no place because he has his words, his words have no place in us because his words, there's there's no room for them because we have chosen to align ourselves with truth and with light and with that which is real and that which is of the kingdom of God. So now when we align ourselves with that which is true and in the light and in the kingdom of God, there is no place for the devil. And now also recognize and support everything around you that aligns itself with truth because as that happens and as the truth is what goes forward the devil will have no place and now you're going to see more and more and more things come on as as time moves forward more and more and more things continue to arise where the devil himself will have no place because truth will be there and the lie will not have a place or the ability to exist so as you continue to go forward, as you continue to move forward in the things of God, you've got to know that there are ways and means that God is giving us to destroy the works of the devil. So use truth to bring division into the ranks of the enemy. Um, continue to move forward in that which is which is real. Move forward in strength and the strength that you've been given through the tools that are part of your warfare. Know what you have and use them and move in them. And live in the truth and let the truth live in you and be a person of truth. Because when you do that, the enemy has no place. The enemy has no place in you, has no places in your life, has no place in anything in you. There is no... there. Is, so Jesus said that when, when the enemy was coming for him, he said, the enemy may be coming for me, but he's got no place in me. He's got nothing in me. Because he was the truth. He was the living embodiment of the truth. When you're the living embodiment of the truth, the enemy has no hook in you because there's nothing for him to hook onto because you are truth. And you're walking in that truth. So live in that truth, move in that truth, and God bless you. Drop us an email, fakemix at gmail.com. Say hi. I always love to hear from you guys. We love you. God bless you. Praying for you. Keep on keeping on. We'll talk to you guys again sometime really soon. All right. God bless you. Bye.